Hey everyone, it's Stephanie Adams with SOS Solutions. I feel like I'm never prepared when I go to start these videos. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, Alright, so here's what I want to talk about today. Um, typically when you go to work with a credit repair company um, or you are getting ready to do your own credit repair, you kind of do the research as to you know what letters to send to the bureau and that is maybe where your preparation stops. I want to give you another option. Um, I obviously I own, well maybe if this is your first video you don't know, I do own a credit repair company but my credit repair company is um, A, we work more with people who are trying to buy homes and B, we do a lot more than just credit repair. We work um, on student loans and we do debt settlement and we do budgets and we're more financial wellness than just credit repair, um, which as the channel builds out, you'll find out some of those some of those things. But um, before you start on your credit repair journey, I want you to have a plan B. So stick around because that's what we're going to talk about today. What is your plan B? What should it be? How should you go about doing it? Stay tuned. Okay, so plan B. Most people don't think about plan B. They figure plan A is gonna get it done and we're finished, um, which a lot of times that's it. Um, but I, I wanna talk about plan B because depending on if you're in a time crunch, so let's say like you wanna move, um, you wanna buy a home because again, that's what a lot of my clients are trying to do. So if you're trying to buy a home and you give yourself a time frame in which you want to buy that home, that means your credit has to be up to par um, to be able to buy that home in your time frame. When I first started on my, my credit repair company, I learned from people that basically said charge, 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 um, and continue to dispute until the client basically says they're done. And I ne that never sat right with me. So that's how I developed my plan B strategy was this doesn't make any sense. This isn't why I started my company. I'm not here to just take money from people forever. Um, so I always give people a plan B when they work with me. So I'm going to run you guys through my four-step plan B, especially if you're trying to purchase a home. So, step one, work on your credit cards. You have to get your debt down. See, with credit, the game is you have to have debt, but you don't have to drown in debt. And I think that's what people miss. Most of the time when somebody is attempting to fix their credit, it's not because um, they're just like, ooh, I want that magic 800 number. Most of the times because there's something that they're trying to get. They either want to start a business and they need to access to capital. They want to buy a house and the score has to come up. They want to buy a car because they need to get to work. Those kinds of things. Now, I don't see a lot of people who for absolutely no reason just want to open 35 credit cards and, and spend them up. Um, and I guess I probably don't see that from people because those are not my ideal clients. Um, so the first thing is you have to get your debt paid down. Um, you have to be in debt to have a credit score, but you don't have to drown in. I don't know how much clearer I can make that. Credit cards need to be below 30%. If you really want to max out the points that you're going to get from them, you should keep it between 5 and 10%. That's really going to max out your credit card points. Your loans have to be paid on time. If you're not financially sound before you get into credit repair, you will fail mostly because you won't be able to make the payments on the things that you need to make the payments on. So go ahead and go backwards, figure out how to get out of debt, create yourself a budget, create a, a debt settlement plan, create um, a, a debt payoff plan, and I will show you guys in future videos how to do those things um, so that you do have that plan be in place. All right, so that is step one. Step two is, um, Let's say that you started your credit repair journey, you've sent your letters out, the bureaus have gotten back and everything is verified and, and you've done everything right 
everything's verified, nothing's moving, now what do you do? The first thing you do is you find out which ones of those creditors are what we call pay to delete companies. Now, if you're doing some research, you may have seen a lot of people tell you you don't ever pay collections. Now, I understand that because there's so many companies out there and the way that collections are bought and sold is super, super shady. Um, and that's why we talk about that validation process because we want to make sure that they actually have the rights to report that information to the credit bureaus. But um, if you know you owe the debt and you're familiar with the company, then you can then offer to settle the debt for payment. Now you'll have some companies that are like, nope, you have to pay it in full and then we'll delete it. And you have to think about, is this worth it or not to do? So again, if you're on a time frame and you know that a specific account is affecting your credit negatively and they will delete it if you pay it, I think that's the first thing you should do. So that is my step two. Step one, make sure you get out of debt. Step two, anything that is a paid delete company as far as collections, is what you should you should be working on and striving for. Okay, step three is charge-offs. I hate charge-offs. I've done videos about charge-offs and how to remove charge-offs, but they are a fight to remove. You have to continuously hammer, hammer, hammer the errors in order to get a charge-off to be removed. Now, if you are on a time crunch, and again, don't give up. Don't ever give up. If you are determined that you're going to get rid of these accounts and you have the ability to take that time to continue to fight it, absolutely keep doing that. But again, if you are on a time crunch, we need a plan B. So my plan B, step three, is to pay the charge offs, depending on if they're within the statute of limitations. Actually, you have two options in that step B. Number one, um, if it's within the statute of limitations, which means they can still take you to court, um, then you can call them, negotiate your settlement. And what FICO does, or what most scoring models do, do is they pick it up like an account that's semi-good. Um, so when you pay it off, sometimes you'll see your score come down, especially if it's like a loan is what that was tied to. Um, but if it's tied to a revolving account, oftentimes you see your your score come up. So if you have like a charged off, we'll say like a Capital One card, and you call them and you pay it, sometimes you'll see your score come up. But let's say you have like a charged off, like I don't know, um, like Santander or something like that, and you pay that off, a lot of times you'll see your score come down. But remember, if you're getting out of debt and you're adding those positive things to your credit history, the hit that you're gonna take is probably gonna be temporary because of all of the other shifting that you're doing. And if you're trying to purchase a home, these are things that are going to have to be taken care of because most lenders do not like to see um, more than a certain amount of debt on a credit report to put you through underwriting. So yes, step one, get out of debt. Step two, make sure you take care of your pay to delete companies. Step three, pay your charge offs if they are within the statute of limitations. If they are not within the statute of limitations, you're gonna call your charge off, whoever is holding that charge off, and you're gonna ask them to issue you what's called a 1099C. Now they don't have to give that to you, but a 1099C basically is proof that they have discharged that debt. They do not expect to get any money from you, um, and it's just kind of sitting on their books as open. If they give you a 1099C, you have the you you have the ability to work with the bureaus to get that account to now state zero. Now the negative to a 1099C is that the 1099C is actually a tax document and it's income. So if you have a $10,000 charge off and you ask the company to give you a 1099C for that $10,000, the beginning of the next year when you file your taxes they're going to send you that tax document and you do have to include it in your taxes. So you could see your tax return come down um, because of that written off debt. Just wanna make sure I put it out there for transparency. Okay, the final, final, final step is your collections, whatever's left. So you've already taken care of your debt, you've paid off your pay to delete companies um, collections, right? You've taken care of your charge offs, your credit report should be relatively clean. If you're going to buy a house, remember we talked about, there's a lot of lenders out there that can't, they can't 
um, put you through underwriting until you're below a certain threshold of debt. Um, so if you have collections that are remaining and they're keeping you above that threshold, you may have to pay them or you may have to put your plans on buying a house aside for a little while longer and let them continue to age out and fall off your credit report. So there's an A and B on this one as well. Remember, statute of limitations, if it's beyond five years, see if they'd be willing to issue a 1099. Um, uh, See if they are a pay to delete company, um, and if they're not, if it's been sitting there for you know more than two or three years, you definitely could see your credit score drop. Just being totally honest with you, you could see your credit score drop, and then you have to build around that. So if it means opening a new card, paying cards down, something like that to kind of get those points back, that's something that you're going to have to work on as well. Again, this all takes time and it's all a plan um, but if you're gonna start the credit repair process I really 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 urge you to have that plan be in place when you start your credit repair journey so that's me transparency that's what we do with our clients we give them a plan A and a plan B so um, I know I probably like said a whole lot of stuff there feel free to leave comments um, and make sure that you subscribe I normally respond to most of the comments and you can also you can find me um, email me you can find me on Facebook too because I'm over there um, send me a message if you have something specific that you want to ask I'm getting a lot of messages for people which I absolutely absolutely love so continue to reach out and I will answer as many questions as I can get to um, alright guys make sure that you're subscribing so that you can get some more cool tips about fixing your credit as well as um, some really great financial advice that's coming in the future videos you guys alright take care I'll see you next time